Welcome back to another episode of Collider Mailbag. We've all changed clothes, so obviously it's a new day. <laughs> yes. uh, what's happening, everyone? This is the show where we take your questions. That's why it's Mailbag. You submit them at Collider Video. We go through them. We pick some cool ones. We chat about them. It is that simple. Unbelievable. Right next to me <laughs> over here, it's Natasha Martinez. Welcome back. Hello. Thank you. Sitting next to her, the Zang master himself, Dennis Zang. What's up, dude? What's up? It's Oscar Sunday, right? So that means you guys should check out our live Oscar pre-show at 4 p.m. Pacific today. Right around the corner, and I have magically jumped from here into my tux, in, and I'm covering the red carpet for Fandango, talking to some peeps, and then I'll be back here. How do I do it? I'm a time traveler. Magic. That's right. Magic. <laughs> Magic. All right. We're going to get to it. Natasha, what's up first? Frank DeTank writes, nice. everyone's waiting to see how Assassin's Creed and Warcraft do to see if there will be more video game adaptations. Well, if Jungle Book does really well in the box office, do you think we'll see more adaptations like a live action Lion King, Aladdin, or maybe even The Little Mermaid? I personally would love to see Lion King just as the way they made Jungle Book. Thanks and bring on the filthy. Well, I mean, they, they already are going to do, a, they've talked about a lot of those. And Aladdin, I think, is happening from what... Beauty and the Beast is happening. Beauty and the Beast is definitely happening. What Some happened of the, with The Little Mermaid? Well, The Little Mermaid, they were, Sofia Coppola was doing one, but it, I, I don't, it wasn't a Disney version. It yeah. was like, it, because they remember it was, that was a book that, I don't remember who has the rights for it, but it, not the, the version of Disney's, I don't know if it's been in development yet, but it will be. Um, and will the the success of this, Jungle Book is huge? Will that green light it a little faster? Probably, and we'll probably see more of those. But I think the plan is to do that because that's a new franchise. Disney is just for me. I think that they are they're one for three in these adaptations. I thought that the the first one that they did, Alice in Wonderland, eh, not 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 so great. Then Maleficent, I hated. I hated Maleficent uh, because it was nothing even close to what she was in that you have to change it up a bit that i understand and that's what cinderella did cinderella to me was the perfect transfer from classic disney movie into live action film and i think that's kind of what they're going with with beauty and the beast and what they're going to do with, with jungle book so um i think you'll definitely see more of these things regardless if jungle book does well what do you think yeah i didn't yeah i didn't care for alice in wonderland i actually didn't mind maleficent but i it wasn't like one of my favorite movies that they changed, year they changed who she is yeah but cinderella yeah that was exactly how they should adapt these things and then when he talks about lion king if they do lion king exactly the way they do jungle book it will not be live action anymore because jungle book pretty much other than the kid yeah everything's cg the environments the the animals and everything except for him but there's at least him Lion King, there's no human characters in there. So if you did it exactly the same, it just, it'd be a CG movie that looks live action. But what's, what is the, because we've gotten into this conversation before. What's, what's the genre? It's because it's not, anim, it's not animated. If it's the case, what it is, it is still kind of, it is still live action. It's just with CG. Low cap, I guess. Yeah. It's, low cap. They'll have to create another category, I but, guess. Yeah, but it is kind of, but it is. I see. I would argue that I still think it is live action. It's just not live action with it because it, it's still, you look at the characters that, and everyone that was doing the performance capture in the movie, there's no difference. Would you say, I mean, just because there's no other humans in it, I don't think that that takes away from the fact that it's live action. I know it's going to be an argument from a, a lot yeah. of conversations. I don't, I don't see Scarlett Johansson. She's playing uh, what, the, Scott, the Python. Yeah, yeah. Sa, right? Yeah. I don't see her wiggling on the ground, <laughs> right, <laughs> like, right, right, like right. doing motion capture. Right. So, uh, Natasha, you've been known to watch a Disney movie yes. or two. Yes. Are you, first of all, excited about The Jungle Book? And then do you think that there will be more? Which ones would you like to see made? Well, I am super excited for The Jungle Book. I can't wait to just see how visually awesome it's going to be. And I love that story. I think it's really fun. I would love to see Lion King done in the same way, whether or not it's live action, call it live action, call it CGI, whatever. I think it'd be awesome to see it done in that same way. Um, Little Mermaid would be cool, too, just because that underwater world. Um, but the Disney version, because right, I think the right. other one was more like darker, dark, yeah. right? Although that would be really interesting also. Um, but I think that they do need to space it out because I'm kind of like, mm, okay, Disney, like another movie, another one. I think they need to space it out a little bit more and keep the novelty with really? the films. Really? So, yeah. Okay, because for, because we had Cinderella was 2014, right? Are we, getting, are we getting about one a year now? I think so. I think about one a year because you're going to get 2014. So you'd want to do it, what, every two years? Yeah, I don't know. Is it really only been one a year? I just feel like we're 
having maybe it's just with all the Snow White movies coming out <laughs> that's, that that's I'm just problem. getting confused with. <laughs> that's the problem is that there's so many. They haven't even done, and Disney hasn't even done their version of Snow White, and I, they probably won't after all the turds that yeah. have been out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a lot of fairy tale movies that haven't worked, and and like I said, I think Cinderella was the one to me. That, Cinderella that, was perfect. I think yes. they're working on a Mulan one. Oh, yes, they are. Right. Yeah, definitely. That would be totally yeah. awesome. Also, they got to keep all the music, too. I want to see all mm-hmm. the music remain. I love in the trailers of The Jungle Book, do you have Baloo singing Bare Necessities? Yeah. I think it's amazing. All right, so what's next? Great. Sharif Ismail writes, do you think that Rogue One will have its own score or will it incorporate mostly some of the classic John Williams themes from the rest of the series? It would be tough to have a Star Wars film without those classic scores, but at the same time, it would set Rogue One up with its own feel and mood separate from the rest of the series. Thoughts? I think you're absolutely right, but I, I think that they are going to absolutely use a new score. They even brought in, do you have the composer? his name in no. front of you. Um, they brought in a brand new composer that uh, Riley, if you're back there, let me know the uh, the composer's name for Rogue One. And for Rogue One, you are going through different themes here because, and this is because I read the book Battlefront Twilight Company and really showed the band of brothers and what these, don't assume that all of these soldiers are f- so gung-ho and hurrah about the rebel cause. They're, they're also their soldiers who are fighting because that's what their job is. And that's what a lot of them are, will be doing in Rogue One. And I think that it's a, it is a different tone. I think we're going to set up the score. Who do you got? Alexander Desplat is doing the score. And I think that, that you're going to have... I think that you have to make it familiar. Because Kevin Kiner, I think, is doing the score for Rebels. And in Rebels... You have a lot of similar themes from John Williams for sure. And I think it's called for because there are Jedi in that as well too. There's Vader's in that one. Now I think you will hear Vader's theme yeah. when Vader shows up. You'll absolutely get the John Williams theme. So I think that there will be some of the John Williams music, but I think we'll get some new stuff from the plot as well too. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a mix. You're gonna definitely, with Vader and any of the stormtroopers, um, and then I hope they, they mix in something kind of like what you're talking about, mix in some stuff that sounds like Band of Brothers or Saving Private Ryan, those type of yeah. war type of scores and mix that in with Star Wars. Yeah, and maybe they will. Maybe they'll get some hints from him because you're talking those movies you're talking about, John yes. Williams. Um, I think that, yeah, I want to, I really, I, I, and I think you have to open with the main theme. Mm. I think you have to open yeah. with the Star Wars theme. All right. Uh, what's next? Sam Dean Bobby Castiel writes, Hey guys, big fan of your show. It's my daily addiction. Have you guys read the articles about the good dinosaur being the first box office flop for Pixar? Why do you guys think people were so turned off from wanting to go see this film? What do you think, Dennis? Uh, I saw it. I thought it was all right. Uh, I don't know. There wasn't anything, at least to me, I didn't feel any of that sp- special Pixar magic from it. Uh, and I think, that, that made its way into the marketing as well. When people saw the marketing, they're like, I don't really know if we really need to see this. And they really didn't push it as hard as they, like inside out, they were, it was everywhere, yeah. right? And I actually thought that was a tougher sell than Good Dinosaur. Good Dinosaur, like it was very easy. There's a cute dinosaur or whatever. With inside out, you're dealing with emotions and they're all weird shapes and colors and all that stuff. But they did such a good job with that. With Good Dinosaur, it's almost like they were like, no, we're not gonna we're not gonna put that much effort into it. And and another thing I always keep mentioning for a kids movie, it seemed kind of violent. Like the way that that the, the I forgot the name of the the lead dinosaur, but the way he fell and got hit and stuff like and got bruised, it was I don't know. Even I, I was watching, I was like, man, this is very brutal for a kids movie. It was definitely brutal for a kids movie. That's why I didn't take my daughter to see it. She's only four, and I knew there's no way Inside Out. She, she loves it. Yeah. She watched it. it was it, it it was a hard sell for that audience for younger kids. I think like kids up until like seven or eight maybe see that film for sure. Um, but I also think don't forget that, that movie was I think, believe it was supposed to come out in 2013 or 2014. Excuse me, it was supposed to come out in 2014, and then they pushed it. And they moved it, um, and then it was moved because they don't Pixar. It was the first time Pixar ever released two movies in one year, and it was I didn't think it was bad no, it just was okay it's exactly what you're saying it didn't have that pixar magic behind it and when you had inside out and it was just it just was like an average animation film that didn't you, you if you didn't know you, most people probably wouldn't have guessed that pixar did it at all because it didn't feel like it so i think that it, but did it bomb i don't think it bombed but i think maybe if you count 
because because it was delayed so much, they probably had to invest a lot yeah. more money into it than normal. Yeah. So I think maybe if you account for that, it probably didn't make its money back. Now, Tasha, did you see? You saw? We know you saw I Inside Out. It. You saw both. I saw both. And what yeah. did you think of Good Dinosaur? So Good Dinosaur, I felt like it had the bones to be like a great movie. It definitely had like that sentimental feeling, like his father and him wanting to work to, you know, make him proud. Um, and also, why does every like parent have to die in these movies? Right. But spoiler it, it's alert, a, it's sorry. a Disney theme. Yeah, like, yeah. Mothers and fathers. But there was no meat to it. I felt like they didn't do a lot with different characters in that prehistoric time. You know, I felt like they could have brought in more dinosaurs and maybe more people to help or people, more dinosaurs to help him out on his journey. Um, and then I talked about this with John in comparison. I watched Finding Nemo probably about two days after I watched mm. a good dinosaur and I just saw that film and I was like, this is like how you do yeah. a Pixar movie. Like there were so many fishes and sharks and like crabs and seagulls that were just involved in it. And I just didn't feel like they brought any of that character development in the good dinosaur. Yeah. They tried to do the kind of the reverse boy and his dog thing. And it just, it, you know, just didn't... the little caveman boy was really cute. Yeah, like... My favorite character. <laughs> and he was only in it for like two minutes was the, I think it was a, was a triceratops the one that had like all the little animals oh, that were on yeah. The, yeah yeah that, yeah that that was when i felt like oh that's like pixar and then yeah. he disappeared and never saw me again. yeah mm -hmm. all right what's next <laughs> caleb peterson asks hello collider crew recently one of the producers of the lego movie came out and said his dream project would be a nintendo movie in the same vein do you think this could work oh my god yes please that would be so great <laughs> if they can get like Glass Joe, Mike Tyson, and the uh, you know the uh, Super Mario Brothers, and everybody inside of a Nintendo movie, like old school Nintendo. Um, yeah, Kid Icarus. Like, like I would love to see an old school kind of Nintendo movie in the vein of Lego. I think that if you know they, if they know th this is a story that they can tell and they can put that humor because the Lego movie had a lot. I mean genuine laughs and it played to the kids and it also played to us and i thought that it, it was a great mix of how you make one of those movies so if they want if they have the story to tell with those classic nintendo characters pixar was aiming for something like that and garbage uh what do you think <laughs> well i mean definitely in the the vein of lego movie because i love that movie it would be great but also another not not pixar but you know who did it well was Disney animation with Wreck-It Wreck Ralph. Ralph. Sure. So if you did either did a Wreck-It Ralph version of, of a Nintendo movie or Lego version of that movie, I think it'd be great. But we also have to remember a lot of Lego movie success was Lord and Miller, like that yeah. that combination. So I don't know if just doing it in the vein of we'll have to wait and see when we see those uh, other Lego movies like Lego Batman and Lego Ninjago, right? And see if that still has that same type of magic. Now the question also is because didn't. <laughs> Because that horrible ass um, Super Mario Brothers movie that it it made Nintendo said you, no one is ever allowed to use the <laughs> Super Mario Brothers ever again. Um, but when then, did that movie come out? I don't. Oh, eighty like like early nineties, like early early nineties, yeah. yeah. And it, it it was Bob Hoskins and who was the other guy? Like was yeah, it was an absolute travesty. <laughs> and um, it, but I think Mario shows up in Wreck It Ralph for like two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of what I where I was hoping you talk about on yesterday's mailbag we talked about um spin-off films as well too I'd love to see and and in the the continued universe I'd like to see a continued universe in Wreck-It Ralph mm -hmm. because I think by doing something along the lines with uh with Mario and that that would be great I'd love to see Nintendo done in that way so I agree with you Dennis yeah I think Sonic appeared in in Wreck-It Ralph as he well. did yeah, yeah. All right, what's next? Stan Hillard asks, any word on who might take over directing for Creed 2? Whose directing style can you see carrying on what Coogler started? Personally, I nominate Falcon McNugget to take the helm. <laughs> um, Gavin O'Connor. That's Those what are, I wrote down is, is on it, mine. Yeah, right exactly. You took yeah. It, yeah. It, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, Warrior, Miracle, I'm, it's, it's a no-brainer. And I think that Coogler, and I said this when we first announced, when we first talked about the fact that um, he'd be moving on or he's going to be writing and he's certainly going to be a producer because without Coogler, you don't have a Creed 2. You don't have Creed. It's, it, it just lay, you, know, you get Rocky 1 through 6. That's all you have. So 
Um, I think Gavin O'Connor knows how to make, and I don't think you judge him off of Jane Got a Gun, right? Does he? I actually, I actually didn't mind that movie. But, I, it wasn't a bad movie, but it's, yeah, you can't judge him because no, because he came it, in so late. It in the came game. in so late, so what people are gonna be like, oh, but, but what I'm saying is, even if you saw it, and you said it was okay. Pe- people who didn't see it will look at his resume and go, ah, oh, man, Jane Got a Gun. That's that that guy. Yeah. Not his fault. He just he just said, "Hey, listen, you want to make you want to try to fix this thing, and here's some cash. Can you do it?" And he's like, "I'll do what I can," and he did. Um, but I think as far as sports movies, he's the best sports director we have right now. So why wouldn't you? Warrior is incredible. It's one of my it was one of my favorite movies that year. It is such a good movie. I want to go back and watch it like after this show is over. Um, so yeah, I think Gavin O'Connor. Is there anybody else that you think out there could could work? Oh, uh, I don't know. Pair? I was so set on Gavin O'Connor yeah. as well because he could do the, the grittiness that we kind of got with Creed because uh, he had in Warrior. Warrior may be my favorite sports movie of all time. It's easily the, not saying much, but easily the best MMA movie of all time. Yeah, I mean just the performances and the characters and the storyline, and then also when you talk about Miracle, it has that feel good heart to yeah. it that also Creed had. Great point. So yeah. if he can mix those two together, that's why I thought he was the perfect guy. He really is. I'm trying to think as far as I know there's probably people out there that we're not thinking of, but um there are you're gonna get there'll be a lot of names, they'll go through it and, and I and I, I also hope that Cougar's part of bringing in the person that replaces him as well too. Yeah. All right, what's next? Luis Perfecto asks, Hey guys, love your show. I'm a huge Steven Spielberg fan. Out of all of the films he's made, majority of them being amazing, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is my favorite. My question is, and this might be a dumb question, what is your favorite Spielberg movie and why? Keep up the great work. You all are awesome. Well, I'm, I will answer mine in a second because I'll answer for Mark Riley, who I know he wants to scream this out as E.T. Man loves E.T. No. Oh, Jaws. <laughs> E.T. and Jaws are his two favorite. Um, but for me, I am going to pick Saving Private Ryan. It's a it's a movie to me that still I think it's I think it's his best work. I think it's a movie that you are on that beach in the beginning. It is tough to watch, but it is also a movie that I think um, every, not even every American, but every, every human being should watch that movie to see what people did for I mean on both sides, man, on, with the German side and the American side, the English side, like everyone watching what they went through and then showing just the human story of trying to what it meant for them to save that guy overall what they meant to save Matt Damon and what they went through as a team and Vin Diesel's best acting work by far um so I will go ahead and say that that that's my my favorite one yeah that's a really good movie uh for me it has to be and it's not a dumb question it's not a dumb question at all because Spielberg makes so many great movies it's hard to decide I would have to say Jaws. Yeah. I mean, even though it's not like some sort of inspirational tale or anything like that, or it doesn't really, you know, but I think it's a masterpiece. The way that he put that movie together, the way, like, he doesn't waste any scenes or lines of dialogue. Everything is tight in that. And the characters themselves, it's like you care about the actual characters right. and their interaction, their relationships, and the tension about the impending doom of the actual shark itself. It's always looming there. Even when you don't even see it or even hear it, you just feel like it's a, the presence is around. It's coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Natasha, do you have a favorite? You no, know, I said E.T. and you said no. Do you not like E.T.? Natasha hates E.T. I <gasps> Hashtag. hate E.T. Oh! Damn. Mark Riley Damn. now hates you. What, what? I guess we're not friends anymore, Mark. How in the Lord? How, okay, okay how, first of all, how? When did that? when did E.T. come out? 82. Okay, so who knows when I saw it, but I was a child. That was the most terrifying movie I had ever watched, even more than Jaws. Like, Jaws was scary for me as a little kid, but I still love that movie. Um, E.T., literally to this day, I look at that alien and I'm like... (gasps) Well, you haven't seen it since. No. Oh, but you know what's so funny is we did a, a Universal Studio. I won't see it again. That's my thing. Like I could watch You're it again. So scared Can we do a too. bet to where you, if you lose, you have to watch it? And we do, we do like a, we'll do a viewing, a, uh, a commentary video with yeah, Natasha watching so. ET. We got to do it. Yeah. So my family and I took a trip to Universal Studios, and um, they wanted to go on the ET ride. I'm not really sure if it's there anymore. But my mom's like, it's fine, it's fine. We get into the ride, and there's like giant ETs. There's mini oh, ETs, so and I'm like hiding, literally in tears the whole way, closing my eyes. Like I have one. I'm Thing to say to you though, what? Be no. good. 
Oh. 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 No. I'm done. <laughs> I can't believe you're scared. Yeah. E.T. is the best. Yeah. Little yeah. alien getting drunk yeah. off beer and watching whatever that version of Jerry Springer was. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right. What's next, you heartless creature? <laughs> <laughs> hey Collider Crew, so I was browsing IMDB and stumbled across the Flash movie. I thought Chris Miller and Phil Lord were directing it, but apparently Seth Graham Smith is now directing and writing it along with Harry Lampert and Gardner Fox. First of all, do you know what happened to Lord and Miller? I can't find an attachment to the project. Second, don't you think it's dangerous getting a first-time director and writer of Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter doing such a big movie? Thanks and keep up the great work. Um, so you answer your second part, yes, that is very dangerous. To the first part, Han Solo happened. Um, that, that's why they left, because they got the opportunity to do Han Solo. Now, Flash is not, it's, it's also a big property, but it's not Han Solo. And, you know, when right now, when Lucasfilm is calling, you pick up, and, you, and, and those guys, they, they saw the success of kind of what happened with the Russo brothers as well, too, and, and we've seen what they did with, uh, with Lego Movie and, and what they did with 21 and 22 Jump Street, and now they're kind of moving over and doing something else. And, um, and I think the Russo brothers really kind of paved the way because if you look, because everyone, everyone was saying, when, when they announced that the Russo brothers were doing Captain America Winter Soldier, like, wait, what the, the comedy, comedy director guys? comedy yeah. tv or director yeah and when the, when lord miller got announced it wasn't that wait it was like oh that's interesting oh you know what well wait we know that it can work because it happened with with winter soldier and we know that they they're there and because they also did action really well in 21 and 22 jump street but as far as them not doing flash anymore um you know maybe they just said but did they write didn't they write a draft or uh, i'm not too sure not but sure. they were signed on to write and direct they just decided they didn't want to do it anymore now as far as bringing in the other so the other guy they brought in directed abraham lincoln or, or he yeah, wrote the, I think director he, and writer of the of the uh but it's yeah. adapted screenplay though right I think, yeah uh, for the book so yeah but he, he didn't write the book he wrote no. the, yeah he wrote the screen that movie's terrible I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen it. It's terrible. So I can't judge. You, you, well, you can judge it after me telling you it's yeah. terrible. It's terrible, and that's a risk. That's a risk to put him in there, especially in a, on a property, especially after a TV show that is so beloved right now, mm -hmm. The Flash. Um, it almost hurts them that it's so like beloved by everyone. That was my point at Comic Con two years ago when we were on the panel for the Masters of the Web panel, where I was the only one on the panel that said that I I still I thought that it it hurts them in the DC universe to make the DC the, the cinematic and the TV different and not canon because when you have a guy that is doing so well on the Flash, they love this guy yeah. in the Flash too, Frank Gustin. They are going. He's going to be working. It's it's when Ezra Miller now when he's out there. They're and they already are. They they have been tweeting about it. And the flash. What's the guy's name? That's the flash. Who the uh, Grant Gustin. So Grant Gustin has already been tweeting about Ezra Miller and back. And the, the the fans have been kind of saying, "Oh, we want we want him. We want yeah. him." And it's like that's why I was saying, why not just make the whole thing? Let that kid play Flash in the movies. But now they can't do that. But and Ezra Miller's got an uphill battle because everyone's going to have Grant Gustin. Right. The Flash Barry Allen in their mind, yeah. and even remember when they did that uh, DC special or whatever, like mm -hmm. like when they were talking about the origin of the Flash. I'm like, that's exactly the same way they did it in the TV show, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think in terms of uh, Lord and Miller, yeah, they have to take Han Solo. Yeah. You know, why I not? Mean, Fl the Flash is great, but a Han Solo spinoff movie. I also think they backed away from 23 Jump Street as well to do the Han Solo movie. Yeah, I mean, because that movie is coming out in. You know what, 2018 or I think so, 2018, I believe. Yeah. Uh, solo, so they're really working on it, working on it hard because they're casting. You don't hear of a movie that coming out in two years. They're casting for him now. We've been hearing casting rumors for Solo for the last like five months, four months, or whatever it is, too. So, a lot of effort, a lot of time because they know this is a movie you can't you, you can't screw this one up. So, um, would you like any Reese's Pieces before going on? <laughs> Any, what? Reese's Pieces. <laughs> you don't remember Reese's Pieces from E.T.? That's how Elliot got it. I try right. and block as much from that movie out of my memory yeah, as I can. All right, what's next? Katie? Adam B. writes, Hey, guys, what are some of the most creepy movie characters in E.T. <laughs> of recent years, either fiction or based on a true character? After watching Foxcatcher recently, my vote goes to Steve Carell's portrayal of Jean Dupont. Thanks, and we'll all miss you, John. Best of luck. Dennis? 
Uh, well, Steve Carell's performance of John Dupont was very creepy. Yeah. It's one of that creepy things where every time he's on screen, I feel you felt icky. You're like, oh, get him off, get him off, get him off. Um, another character that was pretty creepy that wasn't that bad, but I think the performance was great, was uh, Joel Edgerton in The Gift as Gordo. Yeah. Gordo, what yeah. do they call him? Gordo the Weirdo or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like every time he came on screen, he was just, there was something really off about him. You're like, oh, please, please go away. Yeah, I, I would say even though I didn't love the movie as much as um, as Ellis did, but the, the creepy pa- grandparents in The Visit, Oh, I didn't uh, see that. Yeah, they're they're the the grandmother's really <laughs> creepy. The, so, some of the stuff she does in that movie, just like the fish, like, get, get get in the oven, and it's like, Ew. oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of stuff that is, goes down in that movie. That's one. I think that even was it Magda from uh, something about Mary. The who's the? the oh yeah, yeah yeah yeah. And then the creepy lady from Kingpin too, who always creeped me out. The I think that's the same lady. Is the same? Is it the same lady? She she creeps me out. That lady, the actress, creeps, creeps me <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. Um, Natasha, you got any? Hi, um, Natasha. Besides E. T. Besides E. T. Natasha R. Martin. <laughs> 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 The guy from Silence of the Lambs, the um, like the weird guy that puts the skin on his face. Uh, oh, Wild Bill, Bill, Bill or, yeah. Wild, oh, no, or whatever. Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forget his name, but the it puts the lotion in the bucket oh, part yeah. uh, or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I can't. But, but you find ET scarier than that guy. <sighs> Yeah. It's just two different levels of scary, what but the, they both equally give me the same amount of like. What if it was a shared beans? universe that they were <laughs> killers together? <laughs> no, well, he's not even killing any yeah. people. She's scared of him just like pointing yeah. at yeah. stuff. He puts the Reese's pieces in the basket. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> All right, what's next? That was actually our last one. That was it. That was it. We're done. <laughs> you guys have submitted some great ones. A lot of cool, different topics this week. Thank you guys for doing that. And you want to submit some more Collider video at gmail.com. Now, one of the things as well, like we have so much stuff coming up here too. We will probably do it soon, but one of the fa- one of my favorite episodes was when we did the kind of the behind the scenes and it was just like an all behind the scenes mailbag. I think we'll probably do that coming up pretty soon. You can do that. And one of the ways I think that the way John had had those questions is if you submitted them on his Facebook. I am now doing Facebook live. So what I will do is if you go to my Facebook page and just follow my page over there, it's the one with me with the Jedi sword. One of you guys did that, the Jedi sword. I just lost every... <sighs> Jedi Council sword. fan. I said the Jedi. I said, I said, I said with me with a sword. Jedi of sword. Your What's that? All, I, every <laughs> one of the Jedi Council fans have now left. left. They are calling for Mark Ellis to run the show. My my laser sword, <laughs> the one with the the one with the lightsaber. <laughs> Go over there and check it out. And then also check out tonight. We are doing the the live Oscar pre show. Dennis, tell them a little bit about it. Yeah, we're gonna do a live pre show at four p.m. today. If you're watching this on Sunday, and then we're gonna. Have have uh, me, Mark, Ellis, uh, John Campia, uh, Perry, who you guys have seen before. We're going to do a, a little pre-show and talk about who we think are, should win and who's going to win. And then after that, we're going to have a post-show as well. And I think Christian will be back for that I'm going to try well. my hardest to get over from the craziness because I'll be at the Oscar red carpet. If you want to check out any of the videos that I did before, I did all my training montage videos. Again, those are up on my Facebook as well. I'd love to get your feedback and let me know what you think. All right, I'd like to thank the panel today. First, Dennis, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. She doesn't like puppies. She doesn't like cats. She doesn't like E.T. She's Natasha. Where can they find you? I love puppies and cats, just oh. not aliens. Oh. <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at NatashaLexis underscore. And for me, you find me at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. Also for Jedi Council, where you see me swinging my laser sword, <laughs> I will be there on <laughs> Thursdays. John Campia, myself, Tiffany, and Mark will all be back this Thursday, so check that out. And I talked about the Ultimate Schmodown. It's our movie trivia contest. It is coming up very, very soon. One of those first matches is going to be John Campia versus Dan Merle, Screen Junkies, Movie Fights Champion. It'll be a big match. Make sure that you guys check Check that out. And in the comments section, not only let us know who you think will win that match, let us know about some of the topics that we talked about today. What do you think? Share your opinions. Have the conversation. Tweet the show out. Do the whole deal. We'll see you next week. Great. Hey, guys. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.